Hello, everyone, and <laughs> well, this is certainly not niche, and it isn't Wolf Quest either. Um, <laughs> this is actually Dog Sled Saga, and I have seen quite a few Let's Plays of this game, and it looks really cool. And I finally I got it for Christmas, and I was so happy. I've been, um, I've been messing around in it a little bit, and I, I was going to wait until March because I believe that's when the Iditarod is. I got to look up exactly when it is. And I, I was going to do a kind of, oh, it's the Iditarod. Let's let's do Dog Sled Saga. But I couldn't wait. <laughs> so we're starting it now. <laughs> Just because I think it's going to be so fun. And I, I absolutely love this game. And you'll get to watch me fumble through it. Because I do tend to fumble <laughs> quite a bit. I, I very much fumble through it. But um, anyway, so it says, Welcome to Mount St. Something. It says, Today I moved to Mount St. Something. A new start for me in the dog sledding capital of the world. So I'm assuming this is probably kind of modeled after Alaska. <laughs> um, it seems like it's modeled after Alaska because that is that is what everybody thinks of, or at least what I think of um, when I think of dog sledding is Alaska and the Iditarod. Um, but anyway, it says, An old family friend invited me to the new resident musher at the Firebowl Kennel. And it says... Um, Raleigh. So, um, Fireball Kennel. I'm here alone tonight, but tomorrow I'll meet my team and Raleigh will introduce me to the basics of dog sledding. And so we get to choose our team. So we have all the dogs here have different personalities, different breeds, different genders, and you can have puppies eventually, and that can get really fun. Um, so you can see there are quite a few different dogs. Um, different personalities I do see all three personalities which is good because different personalities influence what a dog is good at so um there are some breeds like schnauzers and I think you can get um like shih tzus or something or um there's all kinds of different ones like you can see there are labradors at least for now I'm gonna try and stick with the um more arctic breeds maybe the german shepherd because um actually and uh, you know i think i am going to get this german shepherd because um in real life i actually have a german shepherd her name is sierra and interesting fact about me um i don't live where it snows i i've seen snow where i live like six times it's kind of depressing but where I live, we have something called urban mushing, which is where you take a scooter and you put a dog in harness in front of it, and they pull you in for um, a couple years there. Sierra and I actually did urban mushing together. Um, unfortunately, Sierra has since been diagnosed with hip dysplasia. Um, she's doing all right. She It doesn't seem to affect her too much, but we don't let her do that kind of pulling work anymore because it would definitely be bad for her hips. <laughs> so, um, but I think I'm going to get my hair and I'm actually going to change her name to Sierra um, just because the shepherds in this very much look like my shepherd. And um, so um, my dog's name is Sierra. We're gonna name her Sierra. And she has the obedient personality, I believe it said. Um, you can see that at some point and I'm going to give her a um, a blue harness because my dog Sierra's harness was blue. <laughs> um, and so this is Sierra. We'll start out with her and you get to choose two more. So, um, and I could see a German Shepherd doing dog sledding because they tend to have pretty, um, pretty thick coats and the, the issue would be a lot of German Shepherds do end up with hip dysplasia. Um, it is unfortunately, um, a very genetic issue within the breed and so it's probably not the best choice for purebreds and my dog isn't even purebred she's a german shepherd mix but um she still i guess had enough shepherd in her to have inherited some of those genetics unfortunately but um a labrador at least the ones where i live have pretty thin coats and so i would kind of be concerned about a labrador for or even or a schnauzer for arctic travel um saint bernard probably but we already have um, an obedient dog and we want to try and get the different personalities so we want to try to get a strong dog and we want to try to get a steady dog um, and it looks like it's probably going to be these two because <laughs> um, they are what I clicked on uh, Merrimack and Nikina and we would probably change their names um, but if you guys do want me to experiment with the different ones the Labradors, um, the Schnauzers, um, even the St. Bernards you, you guys want me to experiment with hiring different dogs then we can certainly do that but for now I'm going to stick to the more arctic ones especially since the schnauzer is obedient and the St. Bernard is obedient and the lab uh, one of the labs is obedient and we already have an obedient dog so um we want to um let's go ahead and get Merrimack and 
I'm going to change his name. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm going to change his name, but he does not strike me as Merrimack. Let's change his harness color, too. I'm going to put it... Oh, I really like this color here. I <laughs> um, really like that one. And then, what should we call him? Not Merrimack. Um, hmm. Um, you know what? I'm just going to call him Max because... Um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen the movie Abelow. <laughs> it's um, it's kind of probably a little bit of an older movie now. I was, I was in, I had a dog sledding craze when I was little, and I was very obsessed with that movie at one point. Um, but my favorite dog in that movie was named Max, and he kind of looks like him. So we'll go ahead and name him Max, and then we'll hire Nikina as well. And we should have one dog each personality type now. And I'm gonna shift her harness as well. I, um, I'm gonna kind of try and color code my dogs a little bit, but I'm going to keep them all in the blue spectrum for now because what I'll probably end up doing is if we have different teams of dogs that we end up racing together consistently, I'll have them in the same color spectrum. So this will be the uh, blue center team. And yeah, let's go ahead and do that so her harness stands out a little bit. And I don't want to keep her name as Nikina. Um, hmm, what do we want to name her then? I think have plenty of boy names, but, but not any girl ones for this. Um, um, you know what? I will. She doesn't exactly look like the um, the one, but there was another another one of the dogs from Apolo was Maya. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and name her Maya, even though she does really doesn't look like Maya from <laughs> from Apolo. But we have Max, so we can probably just go ahead and we can stick with that theme. So um, we have. Maya, Max, and Sierra. So it says press and hold anywhere, and it'll give you this arrow, and it says release to throw, and you can toss treats. And that's that is how you feed your dogs. You have to toss them a treat, and when they're panting and their broth is glowing, that's when you want to feed them treats. You can feed them anytime they're panting, but you get perfects when their breath is glowing like that. So that's a restock. That just means it refills your food. And you can see it comes up with a little perfect. That means there's a rock and you gotta jump over it. And I really, I try to imagine that in real life. Um, sometimes dogs get tangled, but like, can you even imagine that kind of thing in real life? And oh, oh my, we have some hot shot coming through. <laughs> um, what a jerk it says. <laughs> um, he just blasted right through, so. Here we are, right in our journal. It says, Yesterday some jerks sprayed snow all over me while I was learning the ropes of Raleigh and my new team. Anyway, there's a race today, and I think I should see how I do. So, that's whether it's clear at night, medium-length race, occasional wind, average lead challenge, you get $400 you win, snow quality is flawless, um, team size three dogs, excessive restocks, no foliage, so no trees no obstructions. So these all mean different things in the difficulty of the race. And we'll go ahead and we'll enter. Um, it says, Raleigh told me he thinks Sierra would make a good lead dog. So we will grab her, like it says, and move her up to the front here. And, um, gosh, I can't remember which, oh, it says the personality here, strong and steady. So I believe obedient, oh, I can never keep track which ones are good for each position. So the way it works is each personality type has a possibility of two positions that they're good at and one that they'll never be good at. So that you can always rule out which one, but I always forget which one is which. So I think we're going to swap Maya and Max as well because I think strong... No, we're gonna swap them back. I, it'll take you. You know pretty quickly if your dog's gonna be good at the position or not within a few races, and in the early races, it really doesn't matter too much. So we also don't know any of these things. So this is um, skill and fault. We don't know any of them yet, and we don't know what their favorite things are, and those will come into play a little later on. So we'll go ahead and start the race, um, and just see how this goes. So it's at night and it's clear and. One of the things the dogs can like, I believe, is different kinds of weather, but I didn't see, and I'm feeding them too early. <laughs> you ideally want to let them pant just a little bit, because if you watch, you'll see their breath starts glowing. So you'll see their breath shimmers, kind of. And that's when you get perfect throws. Whereas if you just feed them right away when they're panting, you don't get perfect throws. Perfect throws give you speed boosts, so you'll see you speed up a little bit. There's some wind, which means that it, it'll blow the treats a little bit. You, 
if the line starts getting, um, oops, oh dang it, um, oh, and I, I just, she just got, um, she just got tired, unfortunately, um, because I didn't, I missed her the first time, which is a bad thing, you don't want that to happen, um, but you'll see the line glows when it, a tangle is about to happen. And you want to make sure you get your dogs back in position before the tangle occurs. <laughs> Tangled dogs are not a good thing in real life or otherwise. Um, in this game, it causes all kinds of problems. In real life, it causes even more problems. Apparently, okay, so Max had something happen that he liked. Um, oh, and she got tired again. Dang it. Um, cameras are flashing, so it'll explain all these things afterwards, um, and we'll go ahead and just keep feeding these guys, I keep feeding them too early, and we're actually in second place, we're not doing too bad, um, I think, it seems like Max likes passing other teams, oh, and we got first, wow, <laughs> um, okay, so, it'll explain things here, so, perfect throws give experience and they give your dog speed boosts. So, one exhaustion, one exhaustion, three exhaustion. That's not so good, but um. And then they've had a little bit of experience and it won't let me scroll up for some reason. So, I'll just hit okay. Today is my first day off, so I need to decide a regimen for my dogs. So, you click this button, you can change what they're doing. So, I'm going to set it to caretake because, um,. Caretaking will help with the the resting, and if you click on this, you'll see all of these have all of them have some fatigue, and you, resting will help get rid of that fatigue. And you'll see we have 12 notes in here, so let's go ahead and look at these notes. You'll notice the fatigue just dropped and the skill dropped as well. So let's go back and we can talk to Raleigh about things. So it says, camera's flashing. The crowd got excited and took pictures of my team. Ask Raleigh about it. If cool things happen during a race, cameras from the crowd will flash and your dogs can get famous. Famous dogs attract sponsors. Sponsors are a very good thing. Heavy breathing. My dog was breathing really hard. Ask Raleigh about it. Watch your dog's breathing to anticipate their hunger. If they're breathing heavily, they're getting tired fast. Food will help them out. So that just means they need to be fed. So when you see them panting, that means they need fed. <laughs> Um, perfect timing. Sometimes when I feed my dogs, the timing just feels perfect. When you feed a dog right they, when you know they really need it, you'll know that the timing was perfect. They'll get a brief speed boost, increased skill chance, and progress towards leveling up fatigue capacity. So perfect throws are a really good thing. Um, running speed. My dogs started to run slow. When dogs get hungry, their speed will drop and your sled will slow down. Toss them food to lock them up. So when they get too hungry, they'll slow down, and that's not a good thing. A dog looks pleased when something happened. If you see your dogs get happy about something, you just found their favorite thing. This is one way to increase their happiness besides resting. I can help you put a finger on each dog's favorite thing if you're observing with them. Uh, fatigue. My dogs seem fatigued. And you can ask me about it. Rough races can cause dogs to gain fatigue. Light fatigue goes away quickly with rest and dogs don't mind it. Deep fatigue is gained fall light fatigue slots are filled. It takes more rest and causes dogs' happiness to go down. Fatigue capacity goes up with perfect catches. So I'm going to go back from the screen just for a minute so you can see the fatigue. They, um, Maya here has no light or deep fatigue, but Sierra still has some because I missed a couple of times and so she didn't get fed right when she needed it and she got more tired. Happiness. How should I maintain my dog's happiness? Dogs will naturally have good happiness. Dogs will get unhappy if they have deep fatigue or a few other reasons. Enjoying their favorite thing will make their happiness go up for a while. Happiness occur or affects how often a dog's fault may occur. Faults are bad things. You really don't want those to happen. Um, personality. My dogs seem to have certain personalities. There are three main personalities a racing dog can have. Their personalities include their aptitude for each line position. You can't know for sure if they're a natural for a position, but you can rule out the position they'll struggle with. Uh, specialty position. Your dogs can develop a specialty for certain positions. In this specialty, in their specialty position, dogs won't get tired as quickly. Depending on their aptitude, their specialty will increase with experience. So, I believe it's three races before you know if a dog has a natural aptitude for something. So, um, Raleigh basically told us Sierra will be good at leading. 
The other two I'm not so sure about, but we should know within three races. So different, the different breeds here, Singer is a German Shepherd. German Shepherds are versatile, active dogs with dark markings on their body and face. Um, probably not normally a dog that would be used for sled dog racing, but out here, you um, like I certainly went urban mushing with my dog. <laughs> Um, Max's breed. Max is a white husky. A husky variety with white fur and gray saddleback markings. And then Maya's breed. Maya is a husky. Huskies are the go-to gray sledding dog. Um, so these two are both huskies. They're just different varieties of husky. Um, so let's go ahead. Um, I'm gonna rest them for one more day because I want her fatigue to come down. Oh, and we should, you can also pet them. And you can pet them except occasionally it spouses out and it won't let you. Um, sponsors. A sponsor approached me about my team. If cool things happen for, during a race, cameras from the crowd will flash and your dogs can get famous. Famous dogs attract sponsors. So let's go ahead and it won't let me pet them. Sometimes it does that. It gets a little spazzy. So I'm going to now switch them to training. And CR does have a little fatigue still, but it should be okay. So... Embarkment launched a fireball kennel. First place winning is $350. And you do have dues you have to pay every so often. So we'll go ahead and enter the race. We'll leave everybody in their positions and find out, um, try to find out what these two specialties are. Hopefully they did get natural specialties for these positions. <laughs> um, it gets a little annoying when you have two dogs right off the bat that have the same specialty for each position. But each dog has... Uh, a natural specialty. Uh oh. Oh, good. Um, when you catching it when you jump over obstacles is very good. Um, but um, what was I saying? Oh, um, each dog has a position they're good at, a position they are okay at, and a position they are really bad at. Oops. Um, so by picking one of each of the three personalities, you guarantee that y'all at least have dogs that are okay at the positions. Um, but ideally you want to have dogs that have natural aptitude for the positions because they'll gain levels faster in it. Um, pretty much. So, let's go ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, it looks like Max likes passing people. We actually just learned for sure what his favorite thing is from Raleigh after the race. We can ask him about it. No, 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 no. Please don't get tired. Good. Okay. Um, that was good. And you can see the treats are a little gingerbread because, um, it was just Christmas. Um, oh dear. Okay. So you gotta try and keep tangles from occurring. <laughs> um, funny story, um, when I went, used to go urban mushing with Sierra in real life, um, one time, um, she, when we were first training her, she didn't like to run unless another one of us came and ran ahead of her so my mom was coming and running ahead of her one time and Sierra had stopped to sniff a bush and so uh, what happened was I ran the scooter over the line by accident and I got it tangled around the wheel of the scooter so we had to stop <laughs> and um and this just kind of gives a breakdown um of what's going on here so they did level up um fame but um but so I was trying to untangle it, and um, <laughs> my dog, I didn't see this, but she ran around my mom while I was trying to untangle the scooter, and so I picked up the scooter to get the line out from under it, and when I pulled on the scooter, my dog was standing in just the exact position so that the dog, or the line went straight around my mom's legs and pulled her immediately over. <laughs> and she went in the bushes, and so then we were trying to figure out we had to untangle everybody from the, the line, and the dog was just standing there, like, why are we going? What's, what, what are we doing? Why are we standing still? I'm ready to go, and I, I was just like, seriously. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that's one of what I always think when I think of tangling, but okay, so Sue has a favorite thing that I don't recognize. We can ask Raleigh about it. Um, oh, she likes fame. <laughs> Um, Sierra's favorite thing is fame. She will get a happiness boost from the attention of fans. So whenever those cameras flash for her, she likes it and she gains happiness. Max has a favorite thing that I don't recognize. Max's favorite thing is placing up. He will get a happiness boost from passing other teams. So every time we pass another team, you'll see he gets that little smiley face. That means he likes it. So, and let's see, I want to pet, um, and Maya likes petting. Um, you just can see the little happy, um, happy face. 
and let's ask about it. It's her, her favorite thing is petting. She would get happiness based when you pet her. So that, that's always a very good one to have um, because you can uh, trigger it anytime except when it's bad out like it's doing now. Um, let's see. So let's go ahead and rest them. And when you rest, this, you'll see the skill goes down. And let's go ahead and we'll... Um, the next race is in three days. We can rest him for one more day. And that will clear up the last of her fatigue. So you'll see her fatigue goes down there. And let's go ahead and we'll train. change it to training because training boosts the skill. And I am writing my journal. Apparently. Raleigh started to tell me about a famous dog named Aurora. He said she was the reason dog sledding became so popular in Mount St. Something. So, um, that's kind of the narrative story of Dog Sled Saga that is being told here <laughs> on the beginnings of it. So let's continue training these guys, make sure they're on training, and we can enter another race. So, league average minus two, I think that means, yeah, it's a pretty easy race. Short, no wind, no obstructions, no foliage, um, trees bounce treats off them, that's what the trees are, um, in this. So it's snowy and excessive freeze dogs. And I am glad because we didn't get a dog that likes certain types of weather. That is one of the harder specialties because you can go long periods of time without having a certain weather condition and then your dog starts to get unhappy and their fault has a higher chance of coming out. So, oh good, all three perfects. Um, I thought it said there was no foliage. Trees. I thought I said there wasn't supposed to be trees. Oh well. You do get a lot of fame if you bounce treats off trees and your dogs catch them. And I should have waited a little bit. I kind of jumped the gun on it. <laughs> um. Alrighty. It's kind of. It's kind of. The early races aren't too bad. Oops. Sorry, Max. Um. The early races aren't too bad, but once you get to four and five dog races, you're like constantly feeding somebody or untangling the team or jumping over things. And it can get really intense and very crazy. Um, but the three dog races are nice and calm for the most part. Um, especially at the very, very early leagues. Let's go ahead and we're going to wait a little bit. Max is happy because we're passing our teams. That's a very easy specialty, or not a specialty, a very easy, um, a very easy favorite thing. Oh, <laughs> he apparently wasn't hungry and I just whacked him with it. <laughs> um, so no one gained extra fatigue. Um, a port is up with them, so that means they're starting to like each other. And, oh, um, see specialties. So you can see Sierra got the lead specialty. She's natural in the lead. She's able to do middle, but she struggles in the wheel. So the wheel is the closest to the sled, and then there's middle. And so Max has not developed a specialty, which means that he's not a natural at the middle position. And Maya has not developed a specialty, which means she's not natural at the wheel position, which is excellent because it means I just need to switch them. <laughs> um, I like when that happens when you get three starter dogs that have different natural capabilities because it makes everything a lot easier. If you get two with the same capabilities, then things are tough. Um, so let's go ahead and keep training these guys. We're going to have more than enough to pair dues. We're already well over a thousand. Well, not well over, but we're already over a thousand. So and we only need 500. And we probably get one more race in. Okay, so it looks pretty good. It's a little bit harder than the league average. There is one tree, one obstruction, and still excessive restock. So we're going to switch these guys. And that should get them within three races to their natural specialty. So let's see. I always miss it. I usually, when I miss it, it's just like by a teeny bit, so it's like, no! Oh, yeah, it's starting to drag just a little bit. Even when it's not in the red, if you see it starting to drag, it's a good idea to adjust your dog's positions so that it doesn't have a chance to get in the red, because once it's red, that's when you have a chance of having tangles. And tangles are bad news. <laughs> um... Oh, 
Ooh, she caught that one. That's good, because that'll give her more fame. Ah. And I have fumbled my way out of treats. Dang it. There we go. There's a restock, so that'll give us more treats. And unfortunately, those two, every time they get the little sweat thing... Um, oh! Okay, so she just barked, which means that her skill activated. And I think I might know what that skill is, but I'm not positive. Um, I think it's the same one some of my dogs have on another save. <laughs> um, but um, we'll have to see what Raleigh says about it. Um, which she probably won't tell us this time. Um... But yeah, whenever you see them get the little sweat thing and they start to run slower, it means they've gained one fatigue. And if all of their light fatigue slots fill up, they'll start getting deep fatigue, which is a lot harder to get rid of. And like the notebook said, like where Raleigh told us, it drops happiness, it does a bunch of nasty things, so. And we have another skill active, and it looks like, oh my gosh. It looks like Tangle Free, and what is that other one? I don't know. The pause one, I'm pretty sure, is Tangle Free Skill, which means it helps avoid tangles, I believe. I don't know. Raleigh will probably tell us. Um, so Max and Maya got a little bit of fatigue. Um, Sears got more famous, um, and her fatigue capacity went up, which is good, which means that um, we can, we'll look at her after, and I'll show you what that means. Raleigh told me more about the historic dog Aurora. He said she first appeared one night at a man's cabin deep in the wilderness in the on the night of the Northern Lights, hence the name. Raleigh said the man tended to describe it as mysterious. So let's see. I don't want to qualify just yet. I want to at least dress my dogs, but you'll see now they all have four slots for fatigue instead of just three. And, okay, barking. Sierra barked and let her tongue fly out and ask Raleigh about it. When your dogs bark, their unique skill just came out. They'll probably do something useful. The frequency of their skill is based on their skill level. I can help you put a finger on each dog's skill if you're observing them. So, we don't know what their individual skills are just yet, so I'm going to rest them. So, care for dogs. Oh, and we got a sponsor. Oh, we got a good one. Um, Because it's, I like these little one-size ones, because you can get three of them. Sorry, <laughs> we got the hiccups a little bit. Um, So, that, that will help with expenses, and he just said, okay... Skill warmer, but how do I increase my dog's skill level? Getting consistent training will make a dog's skill level go up. Time off will make it go down. Skill level cap goes up while tr tr with training will warmed up to a dog's current cap. Um, and I believe the maximum you can have is level 4. Skill class. So there are two type classes of skills a dog can have. Star skills or support skills. Star skills will only affect the one dog who forks. I believe Sierra's is in that category. Support skills have an effect on the whole team. So when you saw they all had the glowy paws and they were all kind of shiny... That was um, these two having a support skill. So let's go ahead. I'm going to rest these guys for one more day. And then we'll, um, we'll train them a little bit. And then we'll try and qualify for the next league and just see. Um, try to get that in. That, that'll be the end for today. But um, why is your happiness down? I can't pet either. Dang it. That's why your happiness is down, because it's spaz that won't really pet her. So, not yet. So, and it went down to 475 because, um, we got our, um, we got a sponsor for that. So let's go ahead and try to change leagues and try to qualify for League 2. So, yeah, we should be able to do that, so... Let's go ahead. Moderate exhaustion and low exhaustion. So that's not too bad. Um, let's go ahead. Zero, still zero percent chances of um, of fault. So that's good. And thirty-three percent chances of skills. So we got to. We got. A, I don't know if second place would count, but I'm pretty sure you have. Well, definitely if you win, you qualify. But I think you might be able to get um, a second and you still get get to the next thing. So. And if you can feed your dogs, and I missed. But if you can feed your dogs and have them catch it while they're jumping, or throw it while you're in the air and have it. Um, 
once you have them catch it once you've landed, if you've thrown it from the air, then they get paid for that. So it's always good to try and throw treats if you have treats to spare. If you're on a uh, race with low restocks, that's not such a good idea. <laughs> uh, but this one has pretty good restocks. And there's a tree coming up. So we're going to wait until we pass the tree because so the rice just going to bounce. And there we go. Good. Go. Keep the keep the line from going slack. <laughs> Otherwise, we get tangling, and that's bad. That slows you down even more than um than having a dog get tired, I believe. Oops. And it is often compounded because when you're trying to do a tangle, especially when you have more dogs, it can be easy to miss feedings for the other ones because you're trying to get the one untangled. And if you get tangled, oh good, see I think that's tangle free. Um, but if you have that happen when you're coming up on a jump, you can actually run straight. <laughs> and that is not a good thing. Oh good, we got first. So. Um, that means we can qualify for the next league. I think you can qualify with second place too, but I'm not positive. I don't think I've ever gotten second place in the league race. It's either been first or third or below. <laughs> um, I don't know that I've actually gotten uh, second. So, okay. I'm um, doing pretty well. And here we go. Max has a skill that I don't recognize. Ask Raleigh about it. Max has the Tangle Free skill. When his skill kicks in, he can definitely avoid a loose tow line to avoid accidents. And I believe it looks like that affects the whole team. Because everybody's paws glow when that happens. So we're going to leave the team here for today, but we'll continue doing this. I don't know if we'll do this quite as frequently as we've been doing our um, Niche and Wolf Quest series. And hopefully I'll be able to get do those a little more frequently. But yeah, we'll, we'll keep going with this and just see... Um, see how far we get with it, and, um, so let me know what you want to see in terms of new dogs joining the team. Should we stick to the breeds that probably could handle Arctic travel, or should we go a little bit to the side of unrealism and try some of the ones that probably, in all honesty, couldn't do so well in the Arctic? Um, so yeah, just, just let me know, and, um, and you'll see, okay, the other thing with the league race is every time you do a league race, it resets your, um, back to 30 days or 29 days or whatever um and let's just make sure we have these guys on care for dogs and then um yeah i think that's it for today so i will see you next time but until then this is jay over and out